If you're in business, you probably have a website, but can your site handle your growth? How many visitors before your site slows down or crashes? What about storage and data security? From web hosting to virtual servers, Pair Networks provides the online infrastructure you need to start, grow, and flourish. When it comes to security and updates, don't worry, we've got you covered. Our 24-7 U.S.-based customer support is the best in the industry. No frustrating chatbots are sitting on hold for hours. Check out Pair.com today to learn more. That's P-A-I-R dot com. You love podcasts. The stories, the laughs, the unexpected turns. But when this episode ends, the silence starts. Not anymore. Audiobooks.com turns that silence into your next great adventure. With over 450,000 titles, from bestsellers to hidden gems, your love for listening just found its new best friend. And because you already know the joy of audio, we're giving you three free audiobooks to start your journey. Imagine your favorite podcast, now with unlimited episodes. That's audiobooks.com. Keep the story going. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. Because for podcast lovers like you, the end of an episode is just the beginning. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E. This is a really famous classic episode. This is Really Famous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson, and I interview famous people. But I don't just interview them like your typical interview. I'm not really interested in those same old questions. Instead, I like to know who they really are and what they really think. Sometimes it's like listening to old friends catching up, and other times it's like eavesdropping on a therapy session. It's the Dog Whisperer, your favorite dog behaviorist and trainer is on the show. So yeah, this was such a cool conversation. I met Caesar when he was in New York, well, New Jersey actually, doing some live shows with dogs and all. Anyway, Caesar and I and two of his famous dogs, Junior and Benson, sat in his hotel suite for a few hours on a Saturday afternoon before one of his live shows. So here we are with Caesar talking about how he got his start and he shares an incredible story about how he came to America from Mexico when he was young, broke, and didn't speak a word of English. This is Caesar Milan. Can we talk about where you grew up? You grew up in Mexico. Yeah. What part of Mexico was it? I grew it? up in a rural part of Mexico. I grew up uh, away from the city, and that was a blessing, you know. Uh, that was a blessing because uh, in a farm, you know, your neighbors or your family members are animals, you know, and, and you get to experience that. It's like, you know, here seeing your, you know, your neighbors are buildings, you know, and people that come out and walk super fast and just pass by. You know, and everything is fast. The farm has a different rhythm. It has a different a vibe, you know, and, and uh, it's all about respect. It's, it's all about trust, first and foremost. And then it's the love, you know, it's, 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 it's the, uh, so in that order. So I grew up, I grew up that way. My grandfather, I grew up the, the old way, you know, as you grew up with your grandfather, grandma, dad, mom, sisters, and relatives. So it was, it's the classic, a small area where everybody lives in and so how it functions. So tell me about your parents and your grandparents. What were they like, their person? Well, number one, just so you know, my grandfather died when he was 105. What? Yes. Yeah, so so that that wisdom, he, the, he, he never went to school. That's the generation that was just pure farmer. He was in the revolution of, of, of Mexico. So he was running away because he didn't want to go fight. And, and But he, he was part of that revolution in, in Mexico. He will have like um, marks on the back because they would get whipped scars. And But his, his mind was very clear. Very uh, He was a very calm guy, very loving guy. My grandma was a strong one. It's like Italian moms, you know what I mean, eh, eh, or grandma. So, so my grandma was the pack leader there. You know, she was like total, like an elephant. You know, <laughs> and everybody would listen to my grandma. You know, but my dad, my grandpa was the one who who said, never work against Mother Nature. Always make sure you gain their trust, you gain their respect, and they're gonna give you a beautiful gift called loyalty. So you grew up with that mentality. 
you know that that was that was his wisdom to me that was his treasure to me you know my dad is is a huge animal lover so that's what i got the passion and the love so my grandpa gave me instincts and my grand my father gave me the passion to animals and that's how I developed this. Well, I, I want to work with animals. I, I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to be an engineer. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't really care about those professions. I respect them, but I don't really care. And my grandma, my grandma didn't have education either. My grandma died five years later after my grandfather. And she also died at 105. What? So that genetics wow. and her hair was long. That is major. Yeah, her hair was long. She went back to, to the farm. She said, you know, your grandpa died. I, I want to go back to the farm. This is the kind of people, they, they're so rooted to where they're from that the city overwhelmed them. Wait, what do you mean she, I want to go back? Where was she then at that point? Oh, she went to, you know, we moved to the city. Oh, so from the wait, farm, why did you move to the city? Because there's no education in the farm. Like... ABC. I learned how to read. I learned how to write. While I, you were on the farm. No. Or, oh, that's why you moved. That's why we moved. So that because you can they want, you know, the next generation had to be better, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's the unselfish. So uh, the behavior. whole family moved to the city. My mom, my dad, my grandparents stayed at, at the farm. By then, my dad had a job uh, in the city, so he would send money to the farm. You know, back in that back in that time, everybody, you know, we farm and we help the wealthy person in, in the uh, in that area uh, to uh, herd the cattle, and that's how I learned a lot about uh, sheep herding. I didn't know that that was actually a profession or a sport, but we had mutts. We never had a purebred dog. You know, so it's just the dogs knew what to do. So you own the dogs, you train the dogs, and then you use. Them no, to- no, we never train the dogs. We just never, we never trained the dogs. My, 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 it was just natural. It was just instincts, you know. Dogs naturally form p- packs and they also create formation. Once dogs start chasing something, everybody chases, right? And then one might, one, once, uh, once the human says, you know, hey, or which is very simple sounds that we use in a farm. And then the dogs know, okay, so the human is going to tell us when to run, when to chase, when to form, when to stop. That's it. It's, it's just it's, like that. It's, it's just like that. that. It's just like that. It's, I, I, you can see it in African wild dogs. You know, they, they go for a hunt and then they form. So that same thing, but now it's controlled by a human. Simple as that. Because the human feeds them. And it's not like we gave them kibbles, or like the amazing food that we have here in America. Right. You know, it's just like <laughs> the leftovers <laughs> of what, there. yeah. You see yeah. what I mean? So what they see is team effort. You know, it, it's like we eating and we give you food. So then the loyalty and the gratitude is given it's to big. us. So that's why we can influence a behavior. Okay, so you are doing the herding, or your dad is, or your family is. We all are. You all are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're getting educated, but you're also working in this way. At the moment you walk in a third world country, you gotta help. Yep. It is not that, oh, he's too little. That doesn't exist. You are gonna take care of your sister, you're gonna take care of something, you're gonna take care of a goat. You become responsible of something ASAP. And that's with you now, forever it will be, that's part of you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. work ethic. Um, so siblings, who do, who do you have, who are your? My, uh, my older sisters, but you know, uh, um, they now, they, she now also does uh, dogs in Mazatlan, you know, in the city. But and at that moment, she was not allowed to do men work. That's the bad part about that cultural thing, you know what I mean? So what did you have to do, like house? House thing. Stay at the house, you know. Um, Clean, cook. Yeah, that's stupid stuff, yeah. Like, you know. Uh, but now she's just totally like, you know, the, the new woman. And yeah. she, in Mazatlan? Mazatlan. And what does she do there? She does, she does uh, dog walking, dog yeah. behavior. Yeah, and she grooms the, dogs. It's the two of you only? No, no, no. Oh. So that's my older okay. sister, you know. So that's my, but the, the thing is they give so much value to the male, Right, so that so that that's uh, that's the unfortunate part um, in that era. Now it's equal, and then it's my sister Nora, and then it's my sister Monica, and then it's my brother Eric. So at the end, but my brother grew up in in the city. My my two little sisters grew up in the city. They didn't they didn't get the farm life, which is good, you know. It was it, it, it's good. So like, what was your personality compared to everybody else? You know, in a family, they're all different personalities. So who were you as a kid? Well, I, you know, it's, it's three levels of energies, high, medium, low, I was high. So I, I'm that little kid that if you don't keep him busy, it's going to destroy the house. You know, I'm the kid that asks a lot of questions and, you know, I, it's, it's just this, your mind 
is always in an adventure state. Your mind is always in a building state. Your mind is always moving. You know. So and, your mind and your body too, like you were constantly. Well, doing, if your mind moves, yeah. your body goes. So did you get to travel, or was it? Did your I got family into trouble at to... the city because the because the restrictions that the city puts in in, in a kid. Uh, I never felt it in the farm. You know, my mom never felt uh, um, like she couldn't trust people at the farm. So I would go to the river by myself or with the donkey or with the dogs, you know, or with my cousin Enrique when I was little. You know, my grandpa would send me to find the donkey because sometimes the donkey would you know, open the door and takes off, you know, and, and he would start eating other people's uh, yeah, that's uh, not you know, good. thing. Yeah. yeah, that's not good. So then, you know, they're going to complain and then they're going to make us pay. So in the middle of the night, he would send me, right? But in the city, then you, 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 your parents begin to talk about kidnappers. And remember, and so I don't know if you know, but it, where I'm from is where the cartels are from. So that's when we hear danger. Okay. Yeah. So that's the center of it. Like? That's the center. Yeah. Oh, and that was going on all along. All, all everywhere. Yeah. So, so, so that's that's the equivalent of the Pablo Escobar, oh, you know, the Medellin. Okay. Thing. So so you hear Colombia and you hear where I'm from. So Sinaloa, that's where the Chapo is from. Oh right. That's right. That's right. That's where El Señor de los Cielos is from. The the the, the Lord of the Sky. You know, so all the main guys They're all from come there. from there. So, what, so did you, like, have any, any like, interaction at all? Or yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, well, like, how? But you know who they are. You know who they are. Their children go to school with, this, with the other kids. You know, they're guard by, by, their, by their bodyguards. And, so and everybody just, knew who they were yeah. and what they were up to. And so what did, like, your family's, like, you just have to lay low with them or well you know that's when your mom obviously the mom is the one that worries the most yeah and and uh that's the one you know um just keep a distance you know keep a distance so don't give a bad face or anything like that because then you also get hurt by by you know rejecting people so you have to learn to mingle you know what i mean you have to learn to survive and you have to learn to accept you know you uh, so so with, you have to be able to live within the danger of society. And I, never, I didn't grow up that way, you know what I mean? And yeah. Where I'm from, it was like perfect. So did you it feel uneasy? Well, I, un, uneasy because I wasn't able to drain the energy. So now that I see it, it's like uh, the boundaries are smaller. You know, it's, uh, you are confined, confined to a block. We live in apartment buildings. Even though we live in a small house, they didn't feel like an apartment. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? We, the, my my house was here, and the church was here. You know, <laughs> so, right next to it. Right next to it, and then the, the area where they sell all the groceries was here, and then the cantina. One cantina was in the farm. It was over there, and the only place they had a light on it. One one light in the whole entire town, and the whole entire yeah little town, little yeah, village. Yeah, yeah. And so you didn't really get to escape the city much, I guess. But then when your grandfather died. Yeah, well, my grandpa, but by, by the time but my grandpa died, I was, was 11, 12, 13, 13 years old, okay. something like that. So you're 11 or 12. So your grandfather was a lot older than you then. Hmm? Your grandfather was a lot older of than you. Of course. A lot. A lot, yeah. My dad was the 11th son. Yeah, and he was the smallest son. It normally, it's the older son who keeps, who stays in, in charge, you know, uh, of, the, of, the, of the parents. <laughs> Uh, but my dad, for some reason, he wanted to uh, stay in charge. That's why I grew up with my grandfather. That's tradition. So yeah. you broke tradition. The family did. My dad did. Yeah. My dad did. You know, he loves his parents so much. Like, I remember when my grandpa uh, passed away, he wanted to carry the, the, the gasket, casket by himself, which is the craziest thing to even think about it. Yeah. It, it, it was remarkable to see and, and definitely was a sad uh, scene to see because he was devastated. I never seen my dad like devastated. It's very strong, you know. That People from that era, they're just, they're just too strong. Yeah, well, they maybe keep it all inside. Yeah. It's not that they're not feeling it, right. but they don't let right. it they, they definitely repress every yeah. single thing. It's a generational yeah. thing. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's I like don't a know. samurai. Yeah. Yeah. So your dad is... But now he cries for everything. He does? Yeah. But that's common too, I think, as they Yeah, get older. it's like, you know, he, I'm in the phone, and now he's 83, he comes to, to my ranch in, in, uh, in L.A., 
And, and uh, you know, when he, when he doesn't get to talk to me for like a week, he starts crying. Never in his life he would ever show weakness. You know, that was like a no-no. We softened up. He, well, I guess, I guess it's part of it, you know, that has to come out. And for nothing, he uh, pretty much, <laughs> he, he started tearing for nothing. He's making up for Yeah, I feel time. like weird, you know, <laughs> yeah. like weird dude. I don't know how to, how to see you like with a tear on. Right. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I remember I wanted to cry, so, men don't cry. It was like, but the, the donkey just stepped on my feet. Yeah, but men don't cry. So you, you don't know how to do that, you know, especially when you're a kid. It's a natural thing to express yourself. And so I grew up that way. So when I see him cry, I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and when I see my kids cry, it's not a problem. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I cried. And, and, and I, I mean, uh, definitely America has allowed me to be in touch to my emotional side. Yeah. You know, so you I, weren't, at the, when you were in Mexico, you weren't that in touch with When I'm from, you can. You can't. You know what I mean? You can. It's like, it's like it's, 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 it's sad at that time. Now it's definitely uh, way better. You know, so definitely. what changed, though? Just being here, or did you...? Well, I, I think the exposure of uh, looking uh, perception, you know, uh, it, 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 is it true that men can't cry? You know what I mean? It, it's, it's, can a woman be a leader? You know what I mean? Is, is a woman that smart? Like all those things, that it's a taboo. It's definitely uh, moving away from where you are. It allows you to see a different way of looking at totally. the world. Totally, because you're you're in one environment. You see things one way, one way, one way. But it's almost as soon as you step into a different one, that it's like not only are you seeing the new environment, but you're seeing your old environment. Yeah. In a totally different yeah, way. Yeah, and, 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 and America happens too. Yeah, machismo exists all over. You know, machismo is not just a, a, a Latino thing or a Mexican thing. It, it, machismo exists in America. You know, there's a lot of guys who feel that the woman, you know, can, you know, not too long ago, a woman couldn't vote here. Yeah, it wasn't that long <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, uh, so, th so this, this perception or this way of looking at the world, um, uh, we still don't have a, a woman president in, in Germany already has a yes. woman president, you know? Yes, they should, yeah. <laughs> and, and England has a woman, um, you know, prime minister. So, um, Elephants have been doing it for a long time, you know. Uh, uh, and they're smart animals. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, if, if, listen, I tell people, listen, this, this woman leading thing has been happening for a long time, especially with the elephants. Yes, <laughs> let's know? talk to the elephants. You know, that's right. So, so why, why the elephants? Because they know that a male, when he's unstable, she shouldn't be ruling the pack. And that's what they remove him. Mm -hmm. And this has been happening for hundreds of years. You know, the humans is finally catching up. It has nothing to do with gender. It's, it's what's best for the pack. Sure, sure. You know, so that gives you the, you know, going to different places, it, it allows you to open your mind and, and really look at the world uh, in, in a different light. So you moved here. I read something about you were what, 21. teenager? You were 21 mm -hmm. and you didn't speak English at all. Zero. So what? why did you come here? What were you thinking? Well, I, you know, I started watching Lassie and Renting Teen when I was 13. So I thought that all dogs in America were just like Lassie and Renting Teen. So I said, wow, well, wow. Well, when I grew up, I'm going to go to Americans. You know, because all the, all the uh, American movies, you know, the Americans are the heroes. And they're all white. And so I have to go learn from the white people. You know, and, and so they were all white. That, that's, you know, that's, so I, said, oh, I have to go find me uh, an American. And for me at that time, Americans were white. Because uh -huh. Jesus Christ is white too. You uh -huh. know what I mean? So everything good was white. So America is white. And, and all the superheroes were white at that time. Finally, it's a Black right. Panther. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yes, yes, finally. You know, so maybe one day we, a Mexican will be a superhero too. <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> you know, uh, so, so, uh, so that's why, you know, um, oh, everybody in, in the last, in the Rintintina, right, they were white. Uh, and uh, Timmy was white. <laughs> you know, so that, that made me believe that in order for me to be the best, I have to come and learn from America. Oh, so you always wanted to be the best then? Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, even when I did come, you know, uh, w the greatest thing that my mom did when we moved to the city is she put me in judo, you know, she, so she redirected that energy because I was getting really frustrated and I was releasing that frustration on my sisters. Um, so, because, you know, I have too much energy. It's like, you know, like there's just a block. That's all I can go. 
and I'm used to go miles and miles and miles. Yeah, judo is a smart move. And uh, uh, martial arts, soccer, yeah. you know, baseball. Uh, we we didn't have like a sport uh, places the kids can go. Where I'm from, you can go to the beach and play, but it's too far from where I where I was. And uh, and at that time, my my friends didn't want to go to the beach. They just want to play baseball with their hand. And so I had way more energy than they did. And so they put me in a judo, and judo, um, and judo, since I was uh, six, six or eight, something like that. And, and that redirected my energy. I became a champion. You know, I competed, oh, and so, yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to be the yeah, best, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It's just, it's singers born to sing, and when you're born to be a leader, or you're born to win, or uh, by nature, we're very competitive. You know, especially the kids that grow with the energy that I grew up, the high-level energy kids, they're going to be Michael Jordans, they're going to be Kobe Bryants, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be something. They have to. It's just no other choice. You can't. You go crazy if you don't. Right. It's just your your inner, like your inner self is just kind of pulled in that direction. That's it. So, all right. So you decided to move to the U.S. Mm -hmm. And how'd you do it? I jumped the border. How did, did you plan it out? Like, did you know where to go? Like, well, that there was no, a certain No, you know, spot? you hear, you hear, yeah. Well, for the people where I'm from, the, there is the, the Pacific side of it. That's in Tijuana. So people from the other side, they cross from Matamoros, you know, they go to Texas, they go to Arizona, um, they go to uh, Chicago, you know. But people from where I'm from, they hear Tijuana, California. That's it. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It's a very simple path. Uh, but in order for me to leave, I needed to be 21 because otherwise my mom would not let me <laughs> leave, you know. And so I saved some money for the bus. My dad gave me his his life saving, which a hundred dollars. You know, people over there work a lot and they get they get very little. You know, here we're blessed to have by the hour. You know what I mean? And you have the human resources and you have human rights and all of that great thing. And you have lawyers. And over there, no, over there is just um, you know the labor is. It's uh, really bad. But he believed in you, and he wanted you to yeah, they're, start they're, off with the most that you could. You know, I, I'm, I always say things, and I never... Um, I, always say, I always do what I say since I was little. So they just knew that uh, that day, because I left on December 23rd, I went to my mom and said, Mom, I'm leaving. And, you know, how serious I was about the statement, it, it, it really... She called my, my dad and said, hey, you got to come here because, you know, your son is leaving. And so he saw my 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 certainty uh, about what I was saying, and he said, better way, away from me. So he came and gave me the $100, you know what I mean? And that's, oh, I know that that was all his savings, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So so I put it in my, uh, in between my uh, feet and my, my socks, and I took the bus, I got him a hug. And by yourself? I, by myself. And you headed off to this one spot that you thought would be... Well, uh, the destination was Culiacan, from Culiacan to Tijuana. And, and back then, the buses were very slow. So it took like a day and a half or something like that. And this, the, the toilets smelled really bad in, in the bus, you know. It, it was, and, and, you know and that's when, that's when the uh, bus drivers used to take pills so they can, they can drive all the... I mean, it was the most dangerous thing. <laughs> that's a little scary. <laughs> that's a little scary, yeah. That's worse than the smell, even. <laughs> yeah, but, but that was normal, you know what I mean? That was normal. You hear it, you know it. The guy, you know, they were very edgy all the time. And, and so I just, you know, my mom gave me the blessings and I took off. And, I, and so it took me two weeks to cross the border. Because, you know, I wanted to keep my $100, you know what I mean? So in my, what I paid for the bus, that was it. So I didn't have any more money. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know uh, an address. I just knew the Disneyland or, or Hollywood. That was it. That was, so that's the beauty of, of like that innocent, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Right, yeah. if you had known more, yeah, if you, you wouldn't have done yeah, it. Yeah, the more choices you have, the less a decision you yeah. make. Mm-hmm. You know, and so uh, I had uh, I had family like my my brother, my uncles uh, from my mom's side, but they live in Arizona, Juma, Arizona, oh, that's which the nobody wrong wants. Spot. It's not terrible. It's just desert. You know what I mean? It was, um, I had, so that was an address, but 
I was Arizona. I'm going to right, Disneyland. You're going Hollywood. to Disneyland. <laughs> you know, you're going to the, uh, yeah, the Hollywood sign. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, you yes. know what I mean? Because when you watch when you watch Last Year in Tintin, uh, the whole Disneyland thing comes out. You know? Yes. 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 You know, and that that was like the back in the days, like, and that's the Disneyland. You see, okay, Disneyland, Disneyland. Well, like, what was the landscape there? Where? The, at the border. Well, it's a big wall. It's a big wall with holes, and those holes are controlled by ladies, by older ladies, and they're selling coffee and gum. Uh, so, so they're there. But if you try to cross, you have to pay the girl, the ladies. No way. Yes. Oh. So it looks uh, uh, like you're getting gum. Oh, no, it it looks um, like those ladies are are working, you know. Versus if you see a guy standing there waiting, it's it's more obvious for the police to, to tell the guy to move or to arrest them versus an old lady selling coffee and gum. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really just to uh, a facade. Mm -hmm. Those ladies are evil. <laughs> They're mean yeah. as hell. They're super mean, uh, but they're doing their job, you know. And and so, but there is a guy across the street from them taking care of them. Yeah. So that those ladies are just there to make sure that you pay to use that hole. Got it. Yeah. So you gave her all the money you had? No. Well, I tried it for two weeks, you know, just in different places, different. You know, you uh, that's my job, right? To find a place to get. I follow. I follow people. I follow coyotes. I follow. I. I mean, at that time, uh, it rained in Tijuana, really bad. A lot of people was watched out because you don't see twenty-one-year-old uh, kids. Um, crossing the border only you see pregnant women they want to have the babies mm -hmm. on this side and and they're not as strong you see older men wanted to get the health care you know or they want to work and the and the um, you know and the, and the strawberries and whatever and and I, I saw i saw people being taken away by the current and the coyote said keep going and the family members wanted to chase the the we wanted to go and save them, mm -hmm. you know. So a lot of people die. A lot, a lot. You see a lot of sand, and you see kids on the people's shoulders. I mean, it's dangerous. You know, it's, it's 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 like what the refugees are doing right now. You know, they have to go through the through the cold or through the desert. And I I, I was I I went through the to the rain. But for two weeks, I I, I got I got caught over and over and over. The beautiful thing about. Uh, the, the Border Patrol of the American Border Patrol is when they catch you, they feed you. Okay. So, so you kept getting. So often I would go and just get caught because I was starving. So I would get my, my sandwich, I would get my Coke, and I would wait for them to drop me off back. Oh. That's, yeah, you, so you learn the system. Yeah. But they scare you. I mean, the, the, uh, their job is definitely, you know, to, to scare you. You're breaking the rules. Um, and they said, we're going to send you to Honduras. We're going to send you to El Salvador. It's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they scare you, you know. They, sure. they scare you. And, and uh, uh, I, one guy, when I, got, when I was caught, caught the first time, the guy immediately turned around and, and said to me, don't give your real name. And so when I wrote my first book, I, I, I call those people the angels that you can see. Because oh. that was a human that was there to tell me, because I'm an honest guy, even though I'm breaking the rules, I was going to give my name. Yeah, sure, you know sure. What I mean? was, What's your real name? Cesar Felipe Millán Favela. Okay, and what, did, what name did you give? Oh, I don't remember. Okay. It's just whatever, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. you change the name over and yeah. over and over. It's, it's, um, That's it's necessary. Just, yeah. The good thing is I didn't have tattoos, so they couldn't, they couldn't say, ah, oh, no, you, this is your real name. Yes. Yeah, so that was uh, that was a blessing. The other people that get the two and they get caught. Done. That's it. They're done. So you finally got through? I got through. Um, this coyote guy came to me, and, and um, the guy was skinny, was dirty, and he was smoking a joint. And and uh, he said to me, you want to cross the border? I said, yeah, it, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. He said, I charge you $100. And that to me was like a, like a sign. Because nobody knew I had a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. nobody knew. So that made me feel like to this trust is the them. One. This is the one. That's right. So that, so this is the beauty of this guy. He helped me cross the border. He said, "I'm gonna take you to a gas station, and then I'm gonna get a taxi for you, and he's gonna take you out. And he's gonna and it's gonna drop you off in San Diego." 
Um, I said, but you know what? I'm giving you all my money, so I don't have money to get out. He paid the taxi driver 20 bucks to take me out. So he only made $80. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's another angel. Is that, so, mm -hmm. it's, so it was... It and, he, was and he followed through with it? Yeah. And so the taxi took you to San Diego? Yeah. So that's how I made it. So what did you do when you get, got to San Diego? Oh, I went to sleep under a freeway. And then what? Well, then after the after this, the uh, the second day, you know, on the second day I started walking around, see how how I was gonna eat, you know. You can always mop, you can always you know sweep the classic jobs of car wash, dishwasher. Yeah. So you started you working to get these yeah, jobs. Because, yeah, because get everybody in San lift. Diego speaks Spanish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, everybody speaks Spanish. And, and so you, you I mean, uh, I'm not a shy guy, you know, and, and I just move around. I just move around. And so you, But you knew that Hollywood was a little further north. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that San, Diego, kinda, San Diego was not even in, you know. Right, so you were just know. there for a while, knowing that you still wanted to go I don't north. have money. So, so it's another border, you know, it's yes. called San Clemente. That you have to, you can only cross by a car or a bus. That's it. You can't walk it. You have the mountains on this side, which is the Marines are, are always training, and you have the beach, which uh -huh. they're always patrolling. So you, your only way to get through it is by car or a bus. So obviously, I, I, I have to uh, take a bus, and you have to wait for where, when they're not supervising, when they're not stopping every single car. Okay. You know, yeah. they they have yeah. those 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 days. So, so I stayed I stayed in San Diego for like two months. So I I, I that's what I learned about Seven Eleven. I learned about A and P M. You can buy two hot dogs for ninety nine cents. Uh, you can buy a refill for one time and just refill the big gulp. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So you invest one time and you go and refill yourself as much as you want, which is. It's just an amazing thing. So you I, figured it out. You saw the system. Well, survival. You yes, know what I mean? Yes, survival. Yes. I mean, I already crossed the border. So <laughs> the, the hardest part is yeah. already done. So just to... Uh, America is, is the land of opportunities. Sure. You know, it's just... It, the qualities of the opportunities. It's, it's not just an opportunity. It's the quality. You know? It's the quality that America offers to people that are hungry. You have to be hungry to be in America if you want to have the American dream. You know, um, right? It's not going to just come to you. You have to want it, and then you make it happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. America's so going to embrace uniqueness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. America loves the uniqueness, the the uh, the hustle and bustle. You know what I mean? Uh, um, America embraces uh, anybody that is hungry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you make it. You get on a bus. Well. Um, before I got on the bus, uh, I, was, I wasn't making enough money for me to buy a, a, a ticket uh, until, I, I, um, until I started working in a grooming salon in, in a Chula Vista, uh -huh. a dog grooming salon. And that's, what, that's when I learned my first sentence, do you have application for work? That's what I learned first. Do you have application for work? Okay. How did you learn it? I repeated it as many, as many times. But, okay. Well, I asked somebody, hey, oh, how do yeah. you ask oh, for a job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how do okay. you ask for a job? It's, oh, do you have application for work? Okay, do you have application for work? Yeah, so, so one, you know, you're, every day you work in different places, okay? So uh, so if you go to Sizzlers, if you go to, uh, like, Denny's, you always go in, t you go in the back, and it's always somebody missing, Okay. Always somebody, the dishwasher guy is missing, somebody's missing, so that's you go and take over. They're gonna pay you very little, uh -huh. but I didn't need a lot of money. So know? someone's always missing, why? Because they don't want to be... I don't know, because they didn't want to work. Okay. You know what but I mean? But there's They're always a spot, but it's not it's a long-term spot. For so me, I always, I to, so I'm gonna go to a different sizzler. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then at the grooming shop. At the grooming shop. I was steady. I, I, pass, I pass by, and look at the grooming shop, and it's like, oh yeah, I, I'm a groomer. Right, so I go in there, and that's when I practice the first time because on the other places there were all Latinos in the back, right? And so I, I go in there. There's two old white ladies. Um, uh, I go in there and say, uh, "Hi, do you have application for work?" And they start talking to me uh, in English, and, and uh, but the good thing is they had a cocker spaniel in the back, and they went to the cocker spaniel and he start biting them in their hands, right? And then they show me the picture and say. If, Obviously, what they were saying is, if you do it, you can have the, the business, right? So I went in there, grabbed the dog, calmly 
you know, relax the dog, and the ladies were. They were impressed. They were impressed. And shocked. You know, and uh, super. So I uh, that day I made sixty dollars. They charge one hundred and twenty dollars for grooming, and I said, you know, the whole grooming thing, and the bath, and the blow dried, and it takes, it takes, it. it so bottom line is, they pay the groomers fifty fifty percent. That's major. That's a lot. Yeah. And, and Unusual. I said, and, I, and, and so I wanted to give them fifty dollars back and just take ten. You know, I, I, to me it was too much. My dad would make that in a week. You know, um, so the lady said, "No, no, no, no. You're gonna keep this." And, and you know, uh, and so I kept it. I kept the sixty dollars. I felt super rich, super rich from nothing to sixty bucks, and one dog. And one dog. So and, you kept the job then. So they say, "Come back tomorrow." Yeah. So I came back, and that, and then they find out that I was homeless. So what they did is, listen, you can stay here. They gave me the keys of the place so that I can sleep in. So I start cleaning the whole place. I'm a neat freak, you know. I'm a, I'm a Virgo. So I like things organized. I like things super clean. My mom always had, listen, poor doesn't mean dirty. And so I cleaned that place. They were so grateful about it. I took a shower in the bathtub. That was my first shower in America was on a bathtub for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so right. Yeah. You know I mean, in so many ways. It's yeah. Good. It's good. So, so, uh, so that's it. I took a shower, and and, and then uh, by the time that I that I realized, I made a thousand dollars. Whoa! It was working for everyone. So it was a win-win. Oh no, win, the ladies right? were, They loved you, probably. The dogs loved you. The, you the were people, making money. The people, the owners of the dogs, yeah. said, "My dogs are so happy. Oh, you know, okay. my dogs are so happy." They're, they're, they're just very relaxed, you know, when the, when the ladies did it, the dogs were finished tense, you know, and with me, the dogs were finished happy-go-lucky, and it was just my energy, you know, it's just my energy, plus I knew how to groom, um, and so it got to the day, you know, you meet people in the street, and, and one guy came to me, Caesar, they're not, they're not stopping right now, this is the time to go, so I, so I went to the Greyhound, buy a ticket, give the kids back to the ladies, and you know, with my, you know, very much yeah. like Charlie Chaplin, you know what yeah. I mean? I was communicating my gratitude to them mm -hmm. and giving the keys back. Uh, uh, and then I took the bus and left. But I first, uh, I first bought a, a pair of pants and a pair of, uh, not a, and a, sh and a t-shirt and a new, new shoes because I had the same clothes for two months. Wow. Yep. Two months. That's it. That, I didn't have it. I didn't bring a backpack. I yeah, didn't bring nothing. Yeah. It was just me, myself, and I. So then you had you had your clothes. I your went to Miller outfit. Outpost. I don't know if you remember that, that store. Was... Oof! It was an old one. It's an old one. So I I always wanted to buy uh, Levi's five hundred one. You know. And you got and, and you got, I got a pair. Yep. Yeah, I got them. I got so you him. got on the bus and then. I got on the bus and the, we passed the line. My heart was <laughs> beeping like. A million miles an hour, breathing, praying, you know, classic t Catholic stuff. Um, I cross and just the relief and the smile and this joy and the victory, you know. I am in Los Angeles. Amazing. I am in Los Angeles. I arrive at Skip Road. <laughs> I don't know what the hell the skew road was until I arrived in downtown LA, which it was a horrible uh, uh, area. Uh, and I just walked through the street, you know. Uh, uh, you have to be street smart to walk the streets. You have to be, you know, street confident to walk the street. And all these drug addicts everywhere. I never seen. I seen drug dealers. I never seen yeah, please, drug you addicts. What are you talking about? You had like the big guys. Yeah, but but those but not, guys are not. Are yeah, not like, right, right. They're business people. Yeah, they're not like messed up, you know. Um, these people are like in the street, yeah. smell terrible, and you see they're shooting uh, with a needle. That was the first time I actually saw somebody shooting heroin. Right in, front know, of you. in my life. Mm -hmm. Over there, nobody does that, you know. They don't even smoke weed. It's all about cocaine on that side. Huh, uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because weed is for the poor, and cocaine is for the rich. So that's, you know, heroin is for the worst. Right. Right? And so that's how they perceive it there. So you're never going to see, well, at least I never saw anybody doing that. Uh-huh. You know? 
So that was a big. Uh, that was a big. That was a big shock. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, it's like whoa. That that's 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 something else. But I didn't make anything out of it. It said it's what it is, and you know, that's their thing. This is my thing, and I move out of the skid road, and I and I I I I went for uh, downtown LA. You know, the next I slip on a bench, and the next day uh, I back then it was the Yellow Pages. You know, I remember. And, yeah, and there's a, ba- a phone booth, and I look in the phone booth, and and by then I already knew about the Jello Pages and to look for kennels, right? So I immediately. But uh, you hold on, you could read English. You knew well, the word you kennel. Well, you understand. You understand. You know. Oh, you probably knew, right. Yeah, you would know the yeah, word right. kennels. So you were. Start, it sounds to me like you're starting to pick up English. Well, I'm not point. a slow guy. No, you're yeah, not. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I know what I want. Uh-huh. I know what to ask. You know, one of the things that I uh, that I that I have very clear in me is 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 is, is that I always want to ask the right questions. So I caught a lot of crap. You know what I mean? Maybe my English is not good, but my questions are to what I want. Uh-huh. You know, so to what I want is to where I want to go. So, so you, very clear. So you knew kennels. You looked it I up in the kennels, other pages. Yes, right. And yeah. then what? And, but remember, there is the Spanish side and then there's the English side. Okay, yep. Yeah. yeah. And then you have the Chinese side. Yeah. Yeah, you you should die because you want to. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, listen, I, I, you don't have to know the language to get to where you want to go. Yeah. Now, your intention has to be more powerful than your obstacles. Um, um, so, so you that's got a it. job? So I called this place, and, they say, and, and this, this Cuban guy say, uh, you know, that was, a, that was a, a luck or a bless, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, you know, right now I need a kennel boy. I'm in my way. Where are you? I took, I took a bus. <laughs> you ask, you know, like I say, in San Diego and Los Angeles, everybody speaks Spanish, mm-hmm. so it's not like I was suffering from the from the language. And and they, you know, tell you take the 136 exit here, da 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 da. So it took it took a, it took time. I got to the place. The guy gave me the job, and that's when I that's when I um, I learned about the kennels. You know, they work in kennels, picking up poop, feeding hundreds of dogs, mm-hmm. uh, walking dogs so they can go pee and poop, like, like how they do it. You know what I mean? The guy, the guy, the guys, uh, the guys uh, was selling trained dogs that he purchased from Germany, and then he comes and sells it to the American people. Steve Wynn was one of his clients. So he, we're talking about sixty, fifty thousand sure. dollars dogs. Yes. You know, and. So that that was the dog training thing, which I I was like, ah, oh, it's kind of boring, because the dogs are in the kennel, uh-huh. and they get out, they go out, and and the trainer practice sit down, stay calm, heel, and he put it back in the kennel. So that to me was like kind of unnatural, you know. That's that, and so later in the night, what I start doing is I start bringing the dogs outside when I start finish work. So my days were sixteen hours days, so I. I I I um I bring them out and I put them in a pack, which that's what I grew up with. But the guy got mad at me because they can fight and this is this. Do not do that. You know this is not good for the dogs. It's like, what do you mean? It's like telling kids not to play with each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that didn't make any sense to me. And and um, but you know that's his play. So I I just say listen I just. I just want to be with somebody. I don't have anybody to talk. The guy, we didn't talk a lot. He was my boss, and that was it. You know, he let me sleep in, in the place, so I, I will get $200 a week. The ladies in the grooming place will pay me more than right, this guy. Right, right. Well, the ladies in the grooming place, that was a lucky spot. Yeah, yeah, found. totally. So, and, yeah, all right, so you're working for them, and then what, then what, you made a move at some point. Yeah, I made a move. I, I, um, the people, the people at the place, the, the customers, start seeing that their dogs respond very trustworthy to me you know so they really like how their dogs were behaving towards me more natural you know versus the trainer they were a little bit more in the cowering thing uh-huh. you know um, and so one guy one guy uh, said you know what uh, his name was Jay Real and he had a, a limousine he will sell limousines and he said, you know, come to work with me, and I, and I make sure all my friends send you their dogs so you can work with them. 
Okay, that's cool. Yeah. And so, so, so uh, he had uh, Buck and Samantha, two golden retrievers. So he saw that I wasn't happy there, and he saw that uh, he can utilize me for other things, and at the same time, he can help me. You know? Yeah. yeah. So that's another angel. Yes. You see? And, and so that, and he also, he helped me. Back then, you didn't need to have uh, a green card or anything to have a DMV. Uh, uh, driver license so he took me to get a driver license he gave me an Astro van mm -hmm. gave it to you? well uh, he loaned it to me and right. eventually sold it to me ah okay yeah and he paid me a fifty an hour okay and, uh, and my job was to make sure all the limos were super clean and detailed. I learned about detail. Yeah, and again, your cleanliness yeah, you know, perfect. came in handy. Yeah, perfect. And then he uh, he refer he referred to me to his to his friends, uh, and he told me to charge three hundred dollars per dog. I didn't know what to charge, uh -huh. so ten dollars a day, pretty much, right, per dog. So which is it was a steal, right? But for me, it's, it's not about the three hundred dollars. Is I am doing five dogs. Sure. So it's fifty hundred bucks. Right, a that's month. good. That's good. Yeah, plus what I'm making as a uh, in the car watch, you know, and then I have a car now. I I start feeling more uh, part of the part of the environment, mm -hmm. you know. And thanks to this guy, he didn't he didn't have to do it, you know. He didn't have to do it. So and so that's how I start um, becoming known as this Mexican guy who has a pack of dogs. Because to me, it was all about the pack. To me, it was all about walk. Yeah, so you'd walk them all at the same time. Yeah. And then people would see you on the street. People would Have see you me. seen that Mexican guy walking a million right. dogs? That's right, that's right. That, that's, that, was, that, that became the word of mouth. Uh huh. So that more people would call you to do it? Or would yeah. something else go yeah, on? Were you, yeah. were you becoming like a well, hot topic? Well, so, so then another guy named Ross, um, uh, he gave he gave me uh, an apartment in the back of his house, like a studio, uh -huh. a studio. In in, in return, uh, I can work with his two dogs, uh, Syke and Howie, a German Shepherd and a, and a Rottweiler. So I, I I was his personal in a way, uh, dog walker trainer, care dog care for dog, whatever, all of that. And I didn't care. I I just had a place to live. Um, so that put me in Inglewood. And that, believe it or not, that's when I became known as the guy who can wor work with uh, the most powerful breeds, which is the Rottweilers, the German Shepherds, and the Pitbulls. Because uh -huh. in the hood, they don't have Labradors or Chih Tzus. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? They're they not gonna, they, they, they all have one yeah. of those. You know, they do have a dog for protection purposes. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So, and so... I start walking dogs for people. I start charging ten dollars a day, and I will I will walk the dog for a long time. So it was a great deal. But I was doing thirty, forty dogs at the same time. Holy cow! It's a lot of dogs. It's a lot of dogs, and it's it's great money. Thirty yeah. to three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars a day. So what happened? That did somebody like did they scoop you up and say this is like a phenomenon? Let's put him on TV. No. Um, no, no, no. What happened is the the word of mouth. So then, then the uh, back then the the Lakers used to play in the Forum. You know, yeah. And, and so now the Forum is back, but it's used for like concerts and things like that. And so all the Lakers just start sending their assistants. Hey, go find me that guy. You know, the walk from Inglewood to South Central. And um, and and that's when I start working for dogs for for the NBA. I start working for dogs for you know. Um, um, uh, Vin Diesel, you know, Nicolas Cage, uh, I met Jada Pinkett, I met Will Smith, you know, so then, then, um, so you became like a celebrity dog, uh, I guess, guru. I guess, you mm -hmm. know, I, I, I didn't see it that way, but I guess <laughs> it, it's, I was the only guy who, who, who was, who was rehabilitating dogs who bit people. Dogs who bit dogs, you know what I mean. So this, so plenty of the dogs you were walking at that time were yeah troubled dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they were getting more than just a walk. Yeah, I didn't know how to charge at that time. Yeah, but, but it, you know it's the same treatment. It's, you just giving the dog what he's missing, uh -huh. which most dogs in America are missing a long walk. That's it. A lot of the problems can go away with a good long walk. Um, uh, so so then the LA Times. 
uh, th that's that's when the TV show came. So then the well, LA they Times. Did a story on you? Yeah, they did it. They, they followed me for three days. You know, so they went to a consultation. They went to the mountains with me. They 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 uh, as from the morning to the night. So they 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 I mean they follow me. You know, they documented my life for three days. And at the end, the the lady says, "So, you have a great thing going on. You know, people come and limousines come to South Central, and they drop off their dogs. And 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 what would you like to do next? You know, America always like to ask people like what they want to do in five years. I never heard that. You know yeah. what I mean? But I but I also uh, I never stop myself from saying what I want. So I said I would like to have a TV show or a radio show so I can teach people." common sense, you know, so I can teach people, because at that time, I, I didn't want to train dogs anymore. I just oh, wanna, you were yeah. done by then. No, I, I just want to train people. I saw, So at some point, there was a shift for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, because I saw, the, it's not the dogs with the problem, you know what I mean? A dog that is trained doesn't mean it's balanced, and a dog that is balanced doesn't mean it's trained. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have a balanced dog than a trained dog. Uh -huh. You see, humans who are trained doesn't mean they're nice. You know, doesn't mean they're balanced. So, so that's when I understood balance between uh, the difference between balance and train. My clients are Harvard graduate, but they can't walk a Chihuahua. You see what I mean? So, yeah. Yes, yes, so, 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 so that's when I re ah. So what I already knew, I can sell it. So who do I sell it to? The humans. How? I I train people, rehabilitate dogs. See, I changed the game. Uh -huh. So you were already thinking that before the article, like before the LA Times came to interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when they asked you that question, so when that, so when they asked me the question, I, I, it just came out from the, from, from the soul, and I said, well, I just want to have my own TV show, you know, and 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 uh, or a radio, radio show, um, um, and so they wrote it down in the LA Times. The that 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 I mean, it was it was. Uh, a lot of pages. It was like two, three pages of the LA Times, and um, and and so the the newspaper came on a Sunday. By Monday, it was a line of producers outside. Get out of yeah. here! Waiting, yes. lining up. Yes. What is this? To because that's you. that's the moment of the live shows of the uh, oh of, reality of shows. reality shows. They were just yeah yeah, yeah that's, coming to the that's, yeah that's when top. the Osbournes. Oh yeah, you I know, remember. Yeah, that's that. Those were the first. So then, then, then the, I said I want to have my own show, and I mean I was unusual. And then that what show was that? So that was the Dog Whisperer. Yeah. And now I read something about they they like sort of own your name or something like that. Oh, that was the lawsuit. That was that was when when um, you know uh, artists or. You know, people who are creative, um, we are most of the time, we're going to be very trusting and, and very naive <laughs> when it comes to, uh, to contracts. Uh, so I, I went into a, a business with this uh, production company, believing that they were going to uh, honor, uh, you know, honor the, uh, I guess, the friendship or... Or you know, everybody gets a piece. Right, right, everybody right. gets a piece. You know, and we sh we all need to feed our families. And uh, you own your thing. I own my thing. And so, I will take care of you. I make sure that every single dog we do, we I'm gonna do it perfect. And um, so it wasn't that way. <laughs> you know, it has happened. And that's when I learned. You know, happened to to happen to many people. You know. It happened to so many people. They 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 signed the wrong contract, mm, and then they basically get screwed. And we get screwed. Yeah, we screw. I finally, you know, we won the lawsuit uh, after six years. Yeah. So now I now I own fifty percent. Oh, okay. But for a while you didn't. No, I didn't. No, not even my name. What do you mean your name? Your actual name, Caesar Malone? Yeah. You, I c couldn't use my name uh, for a TV show. So somehow they wrote it into even my kids' names. So if I wanna if I wanna have uh, you know show with Zizi Milan, I will have to pay them money to use my That's name. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Was a very dishonest, very oh my god. It was 
borderline evil. And that know. was the first contract that you signed, or did, was that a different no, production company? No, that was the company? only contract. That was, was it. Yeah, that was it. So what was going on at that time? So that everything changed for you, I guess, right, once you get the show. So now people are really recognizing you more than they already did before. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I never had a TV show before. So you have a home at this point. You bought a home? Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. We bought a home in Inglewood. When you say we, who are you Well, I was about? married. So when did you get married? Where, 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 did, the, where did that come in? Oh, when, when I moved to Ross's house. Uh, at, at the studio place so yeah so that was you know uh, as, as I'm working in America and doing all of that of course you you want to meet women <laughs> yeah you know yeah you want to meet uh, ladies and, and so I met uh, the mother of my kids she got pregnant pretty fast um, and that's how it happened okay so you were married before the show came before the, the article yeah okay and you yeah. had kids already Andre. Oh, you had one? Yeah. You have two sons, right? Yeah, Andre and Calvin. Okay. Which they both have a show. They each have a show? Yeah. What are the shows called? Nickelodeon is Calvin. He has mutton stuff. Okay. And Andre has Dog Nation with me and also have a pet talk. Okay. All right, so you're married and you get the show. What happens? Is life feeling good to you at that point? Are you feeling like, yes, this is what... I dreamed of, I am in this place, I have the money that I need, I have family, I'm in Hollywood. No, I never saw it that way. I never saw it that way. I'm just, you know, I have always been a hardworking guy. So, you know, I have always been a family guy. I have always been a, a very um, um, dedicated person, you know what I mean? So that was just the beginning. That was, that was just... It, once you get that kind of situation, responsibilities get bigger. Then you start thinking about insurance, liabilities, and all this, you know, uh, uh, people who don't like what you do, and, and, and um, oh, my God. It's, so it's the adjustment of, you know, what uh, fame, power, and money brings to human, especially when you grew up with none of that. You know yeah, I mean? was it yeah. tough to? Yeah, of course, of course. I didn't know how. I didn't you know. I just didn't know. I just I was. To me, I'm a simple farm boy. You know, farm guy, who came to America. Uh, you know, looking for his passion and his dream. That's pretty much it. I didn't know how it was going to look like. You know, so, so you, did it you're freak not prepared. You out a little bit, the fame. Uh, and no, no, because I stayed in the mountains most of the time, you mm -hmm. know, walking with the dogs. It, it was uncomfortable for my kids growing up, you know, because people would come and say, can I take a picture, can I take a picture, what I was as a dad, you know. So now they understand it, but when they were little, I, that, that, was, that was sad to see them. It was hard for them. They didn't like it, They right? didn't like it, you know, they didn't like it. Now they love it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, you yeah, know, like, yeah, that's right. Now what were we so upset about back that's then? That's right. Yeah, they didn't. I mean, they're, they're kids. You know, yeah, they, they want yeah, their dad. Yeah. They want their dad. And when you have animals, uh, you you pretty much are. It's like a people who own hotels or restaurants. They're tied to it. Yeah, constantly. Yeah, constantly. They, and animals are. They don't understand. You know, holidays and nothing right. like that. So at a certain point, you opened up your dog psychology center. I did. I I, I opened up in South Central. Actually, I I um I had a a parking lot that a Cuban guy named Waldo Sanchez, uh, we exchanged for security purpose. People were breaking in in his, uh, in his place through his parking lot. So by me taking over the parking lot, I provided security. So we exchanged, you know. Um, I was doing a lot of, uh, um, I, I used to help a lot of uh, rescuers. So half of my pack was belonged to rescuers, so that was like pro bono kind of thing. Uh -huh. And I rescued dogs from the streets in South Central, a lot of pit bulls, you know, because the, the, the gang members would fight them, and, you know, the dog with, with an eye out, uh, they would throw them in the street, broken leg, light it up on fire, throw them out. So I, so I, I, I became to rescue dogs. I'd never done it, you know, but it was the right thing to do. And so a lot of the dogs that, that, I, that were with me, at least half of the pack were rescues. And the other half was, you know, uh, belong to celebrities. Life was good. Then it got difficult at a certain point. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixteen years later, it got difficult. Sixteen days uh, when when uh, uh, I was in England, and that's when I received the call that we get a divorce. And that's that was that was a shock because I was not expecting it. You Your know? wife just called you out of the blue. 
Well, not out of the blue for, for her, out of the blue for me. So you know, you because know, she, it was a plan know. because, you know, she said, I've been planning this for a year and a half. I just didn't know. You know what I mean? So that, that really is what throws people off. Like, when you're not in agreement about doing something, you know, like, if I knew that those guys uh, were going to uh, do the kind of deal they did with me, I'm in agreement. Mm-hmm. So it's not so much what they did as that you were not in agreement that hurt you the most. You know what I mean? Because I, 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 I'm a guy the, the, like with the animals, it's, you just work out of honesty. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's just how you, how you, how you, how you live your life. Mm-hmm. You know, so you think uh, the whole world, the people uh, around you are gonna function the same way. There's nothing wrong with the separation. It's just how you do it. You know what I mean? That, that sh- that's what shocked me because at that time uh, my kids knew. And they were okay with it. So the only one they didn't know was me. Wait, they knew before you did? Yeah, because you told them. So you didn't censor us anything? No, at all? I'm working. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling all over the world. I mean, you know, we're, I'm doing live shows, and this is my first time in England. You know, we have sold out. Uh, this was when Michael Jackson passed away. Um, he was uh, supposed to do a, a show in the O2, and and. Uh, and we were worried because, you know, Michael Jackson, he's going to sold out. Nobody's going to go see my show. <laughs> right. Yeah, but unfortunately, he passed away and then sold out. And so I'm about to go on, to, on stage when I received the call. So it's a shock, you know, it's just right, a shock. Right, right. Because you were so busy doing, going all over the world and thinking about all these different things that were going and on. And she was managing the business. Right. So she knew what it was going to be, you know. She, she was the managing the whole thing. You know, and the, and the Mexican uh, or Latino, we we have a tendency to do things within the family, you know, and everybody pitches in, so I brought her on, I brought, listen, you speak English better than me, and, you know, so help the family, yeah, so. So that's the shock, that was the shock, is, you know, we, we were not compatible from the beginning, but we try to make it work for the boys, you know. Oh, so you knew the marriage yeah. wasn't that No, we were not perfect. compatible, she's a cat girl. I'm a, I'm a dog a guy. A cat girl? Yeah. You married a cat girl? I don't know. <laughs> I, you know. Listen, I was not looking to say, do you like cats or do you like dogs? <laughs> it's such a fundamental just, difference, was, isn't it? Yeah, but, you know, so, yeah, she, so that, that like, even from a, from a, from that point of view, we were not compatible, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, and it's, it's, it's so many things that we were not in common. We just, our common was our boys. You know, so yeah, it was the right thing to do. It's just the way it happened. That's why I felt rejected by the pack. I felt betrayed, and all these things that sent you into, into a, spir- a spiral. You know, where you feel a failure, you feel something die, you feel rejected, you feel, um, you, yeah, I mean, you feel worthless. You know, even though you have all this thing happening here, to me it's about the family. You know what I mean? Uh, you're you're working so hard, not for me anymore. Is that that's not about me? Uh, it's about the family, right? And so now the family is is giving the back in a way. You know, it's not my kids were just doing whatever they were told. They were little. Um, so, but that hurts, you know, that, 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 that really hurts. And that's why I try to commit suicide, which I did try it. I, I was not very successful. So right after you found out you tried? Not right after, like I'm trying to come, come back and see if, you know, how can I deal with it? And, and I got to a point where I just, I just got too, too depressed. Like I was in a hole. I was, I was dark. I was like weightless and I didn't want to do nothing. I just, you feel worthless, you know what I mean? You feel worthless. That's, um, that's that emotional tone that you can go, you can be happy, you can be whatever, inches or whatever thing. But i never been in that, in that place. I come from poverty, yeah. you know what I mean? I come, but, I, but I never come from rejection. You know, I never come from uh, dishonesty. I never come. I never. I never experienced that. Crap. Especially from the place that your mo- it's your heart, where your heart is. Yeah, I'm doing it for the family. I'm like 100. percent I'm. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't. I don't. You know. I'm not a womanizer. I don't have. No. I'm not. You don't know nothing about me. You know. You don't. You don't know that mm-hmm. because I never done it. I'm like a penguin. I stick to one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if, it, if I did it at honor, and that's what it is, that's what it is. 
Uh-huh. He said, even if it's not out of love, I totally get it, but I did it out of honor. So I never, I never broke the rule. Well, the golden, the golden rule. Yeah. Never, never. So you did everything right that you felt was the right thing to do, but then it didn't. You felt rejected. Was, you weren't part of, the, or the pack was sort of rejecting you, and you got and you yeah. felt depressed. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You, you, you do feel. I, you know, like the kids in high school when the, when the friends rejected them or bullied sure. them and things like that. It's they, that's why a lot of kids want to commit suicide. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. It's a very, well, very painful. You know, when you're not accepted by your family. You, we are pack oriented, you know. We we are we we are pack oriented species, and and uh, being an individual is wonderful, but being an individual without a pack, is terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, it's terrible. It's, you have you know, it's terrible. So, did you feel this bad for a long time? I feel I feel bad for like two weeks. For like two weeks, because I was in England, and I and I have to continue. The tour, that was the first day. Okay, so I have to continue for like a month, right? And then go to from, from England to, to France to, to do this television thing where all these people come and, you know, so you can sell the show internationally. So I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm going and, and I, I, I don't know, is it an anxiety attack? I don't know what, what that I have. The, um, uh, paramedics have to come to my hotel and bring me back and blah blah blah. It was just an anxiety attack, you know what I mean? An exhaustion as mm-hmm. well. I wasn't eating. I wasn't, you know, I was just super depressed. Come to LA. So what it looks like is you you're here and you feel like your house is on fire and you can't you can't help stop it. So that's the desperation, powerless. powerless. Yeah, powerless and and. Um, um, you ask so many questions. How? Why? Then you know what I mean. There's no. You, you can't. I didn't do nothing wrong. You know. What I mean? So, but uh, but I I got back and didn't work out and and that's when I find out about you know it was all planned and all this. It's like I mean that's amazing, good for you and good for the kids. But <laughs> you guys left me behind. If I if I'm in agreement, uh, let's go for it. It's nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. Agreement, commitment, follow through. No problem. You know, we're gonna drown or we're gonna survive. But let's agree on one or the other. Mm-hmm. Don't just and let we're me gonna drown. do it together. Yeah, 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 totally. What did you do in terms of? Oh, I just took a whole bunch of pills. They were supposed to kill five people. When it, you know, when it's not your turn, even if you put yourself in front of the bullet, it's not gonna happen. So, did you like? plan this ahead of time or did you just what? kind of one day say, did you look no, up this is the pills that I need yeah it, yeah this is you know the grab and take it and then the paramedics came how did the paramedics know the kids call yeah. so you did this at home yeah 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 you, you just you just lose you know your common sense and your yeah it's, it's just it's not you anymore mm-hmm. it's just pure darkness it's pure sadness. It's pure failure. You are taken away by Darth Vader. You own Darth Vader. You own dark holes. You're covering yourself. I put that crap on me. Nobody else did it. I just didn't know how to how to how to deal to with, do it. with it. Yeah. I, you know, never in my life, you know. See, see, when I was four, and when I had some money, it happened to yeah, me. Yeah, it's not about money. But 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 you could. I mean, it's like. Um, the spectrum of like when you have nothing, you have more. Right. It's not right. It's not about yeah, right. Exactly. Or if it's about money, it's almost the opposite. Right. But then the at that right. moment, at that moment, yeah. um, what all this crazy thoughts and whatever thing. Of course, it's not about money. It's just at the end of the day, we were not compatible from the beginning. Period. That was it. That was it. And the same thing that happened to people. A lot of times, people get the dog that's not compatible to them. Uh-huh. That's it. It was never going to be right. <laughs> no, so this, that's what this time I said, well, I'm going to find me a girl that is compatible to me. So you got divorced. Yeah. Did you start to feel better? Did you see a therapist? What did no, you do to. No. What do you mean, hell no? No, I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't, I didn't need a therapist. And you need to go back to, to, to fall in love with what I, what I was having love. That's so you it. sort of you dove back. I rehabilitated in. myself with doing exercise, mental stimulation, and affection. That's it. Body, my heart. I did. I did what I do for dogs. Uh-huh. Yeah, I went back to what I know best. 
I started walking packs with dogs. I started, you know, focusing on doing other things, like at different shows. I went outside America. I went to Spain. I lived in Spain for, for a few months. I took Calvin with me, you know. I took my, my, my fiance now. I met a wonderful woman. Uh, How did you meet? Uh, Dolce & Gabbana, Beverly Hills. She, she used to work in Dolce & Gabbana on the woman department. She was a wardrobe stylist. And I, that day, I said, you know what? I just want to I just want to wear a suit. And I used to weigh 135 pounds. I'm skinny as hell. And and so that day, I just love James Bond. That's one of my favorites. And and and, and also who's I, the best James Bond? Uh, all of them, all of them. I like. They're all classic. You know what I mean? They're all fit. They're all smooth, sexy. Um, I, I also like. Um, uh, Scarface, yeah. So, so I just got this thing, you know. I want to get my my uh, inner whatever it's Suave called. Suave guy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I just want to get it and got my sandals, my jeans, my white t-shirts, my black glasses. Walk through Dolce and Gabbana, and on the right side, on the woman's side, this beautiful silhouette. I didn't see her face. I just look at her silhouette. And I went, oh God, what a beautiful body. And I just won. And I didn't, I didn't have the energy like to engage, but it brought back this male side of me, you know, this exciting side of me, you know. And, and she actually went to the elevator and I saw her face to face. And I said, oh my God, you're even beautiful. You yeah. said that's her? No, in my oh, head. Yeah, I was, I'm so insecure <laughs> at that time. I'm insecure. I'm a failure. I just want to go get my suit so I can feel good. I'm looking for a suit to feel good. Right, because you don't know already. I don't feel yes. good. Already. I, yeah, so, so, uh, so she said, uh, you know, um, um, my version of how we met is, is um, she has a different version, but, you know, she, uh, she started talking to me and... And um, she said, I'm, I'm very proud of, you know, as a Latino, I'm, I'm very proud of you, you know. And she gave me a high five. And I said, oh, my God. In my head, I'm like, wow, you're so beautiful. I didn't say it. I didn't say what. I just said thank you, you know, and just went out. And oh, so she knew who you were. She said she doesn't. But, but you know, like that guy say, they say, I have a different version. Yeah. But she did engage into a conversation. Right, because why else would she say that to just a random guy? That's right. Right. Why, why are you going to an elevator when, uh, with a guy that just walk in with fucking sandals? Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> with sandals and a jeans, yeah. you know. And, and so it's something happened there. I visually saw it. And, you know, I just, and then I love her face. And so everything about her was just, it just, took away my misery away you know so what did you get her number then or what no 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 i didn't i didn't engage in the conversation no i was like super timid super like insecure so just thank you and that was all i was, was like thank you for being here you know i just not not even verbally i didn't say nothing i didn't even try to flirt with her like i didn't feel like i could i could ask her out you know, like guys will grade the girls and uh -huh. that's a 10 that's a 5 that's a thing and for me she was a 10 and I was a two. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't going to be, it, it's like, it, it's just a girl so you can see. You can't take, you know. So the good thing is that she asked the sales lady um, about me. And uh, so that was a big relief. Yeah. yeah. But wait, but how would the sales lady know anything about you? Because I bought a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so she would have your... Right. Okay. Yeah, and she said he's coming back on uh, on whatever day, you know, because we're gonna alter his things. He's gonna come for measurement and blah blah blah. So that's when I actually talked to her, and I invite her. You know, when I can, I'm gonna go to Miami and to do something for Univision. Um, can I take you out? I didn't know so you she like was from here. She was actually from New York. Oh, from New York. She's a Dominican girl born in Washington Heights. So she moved to L.A., so she has been in L.A. two to three months. So she's new. So when I find out that she was new, the move was, can I take you out? Can I show you around? Uh-huh, uh-huh, you know I mean? perfect. Right? Yeah, it's like, so, yeah, that was, that was the... So you must have been feeling like a three at least at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like a two and a half. 
Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, so it was good, and I just, yeah, I was just love to see her. And so she said yes. She said yes. There's more. In part two of my talk with Caesar Milan, you'll find out what happened next after he fell for Jahida, his fiance. And we get behind the scenes details about his TV shows. He talks dog psychology, rehabilitation, he analyzes humans, dog parks, and he shares his daily routine. It's all good. In the meantime, check out my Caesar Milan bonus video. You can actually see him doing a quick answer Q&A, which is part of episode two. So it's like a sneak peek. You can also see pictures of his dogs, Junior and Benson, in the hotel suite where Caesar and I talked. Everything you need is in the show notes, clearly labeled one click. Thanks for listening to Really Famous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson, and I'll be back with more Caesar Milan. This is part two of my interview with Caesar Milan. Something about her, and she was sweet. She, I, I love her voice as well. So I started liking everything about her. You know, like the voice, the eyes, the, the smile, the hair. Love her hair. Yeah, it's called falling in love. Yeah, yeah. So now you live in Santa Clarita. No, no. Now I, um, my brother. I went and lived with my brother for a period of time. You know, I needed family, and my brother was working with with me, and so I went to his apartment. And little by little, I started become feeling better, better, better. And then I rent an apartment, a uh, beautiful apartment, uh, right by Universal Studios. Beautiful, beautiful. I got a brand, uh, bought a brand new car, just like the the suit. I just wanted to reinvent just a new thing, just a new life, yeah. like that transition. You know, like the metaphor. And so the car was white. She was just like an angel. the The apartment was. Uh, it, it was it's beautiful like this you have this beautiful view um, yeah right now we're looking we're looking across the Hudson River yes New yeah. York City and it yeah, looks so, beautiful oh, yeah yeah so so that was in a beautiful apartment and, and you need you need uh, just to start all over and then from there I bought a house in Studio City brown new house I made uh, 600000 on the sale then I bought another house in uh, Encino sold that house to a nice beautiful family and then we moved to Encino to another brand new house, bigger. And that's where we live right now. Our so you dogs, flip houses too? I do. Huh, okay. Yeah. And you're, how many dogs are with you now? Four at the house, you know, and, the, and it's a very super dog friendly house. Uh -huh. They have their own grooming salon. They have their own area like for them, you know, so. So right now you're on the road and you have two of your dogs with you or they're two. Well, Junior and Benson are always with me because this, this guy is definitely represent the yin and the yang, the little dog and the big dog. Okay, so Junior is a pit bull. A pit bull yeah. and I think we've seen him on TV, right? Yeah, Junior, Junior was born and raised on TV. Yeah. He's the child actor. And right now he's sleeping under your legs <laughs> yeah, on the couch. On the couch. Totally comfortable and totally. packed out. Packed out. Yeah, he's, he, you know, they save energy for tonight. They love oh, to go on gonna stage. Oh, they're going to be performing tonight. Yeah, they go on stage. They go on they, stage Yeah, with you. people love to see them, you know. Uh, I don't keep them on stage because people will not watch me. They keep right. watching Junior. And talk to you. hi Junior, hi Junior, and so I'm talking about something that is very important, and then people would just totally get distracted. And then Benson. Ben Benson comes. He loves the stage. You're gonna see him. He loves like he is a show dog. So Benson is what kind of dog? He's a Pomeranian. A Pomeranian, and Benson is sleeping but in a corner. Benson always like to be facing like to where almost? you are. Oh, facing right, and, yeah. and he is facing. Yeah, us. so it's, he always gotta go and like face to you know junior is always going to be near and benson is always going to be await facing you know and we have other dogs and some of them they go here and some of them go here everybody has their own spot uh-huh and yeah. they understand within the yeah, pack yeah, yeah. who goes where and who does what yeah it's all in agreement okay and everybody is calm within this when it needs to be calm you know uh -huh. indoor should be calm you know indoor the dog should practice a uh, stretching or resting you know a little bit of walk from one place to another but not running so you're, you're performing tonight, you have yeah. a live show, and you do that how often? I do it um, on the weekends. Every weekend? Um, for the most part, yeah. So you're a busy man. I, like I told you, that's why my mom put me in judo. <laughs> right. <laughs> this works for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Be, you know, uh, 
dogs are very productive species and and i think you know humans are we we like to be productive mm -hmm. I, i'm one of those people who if i'm not i don't i'm not doing something productive i don't find the purpose of life you know so for me live shows or a tv show or writing a book or or whatever it's just it's just to keep my spirit productive you know it's just it's it's just to you know paying it forward helping people and you know it's right. just now, you never got any, like, specific training of, like, any kind of, I don't know, dog training training or anything like no. that. You know what I'm saying? No, I never, I never got to the dog trainers in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I actually train trainers now. You're also, like, a therapist at this point. Well, a I... A human I, therapist. I, I, well, I do train people, right? So, That's what I mean. So, making people aware and, and helping people to become... Uh, um, uh, to acknowledge that they are the problem is definitely a first step. Right. I mean, it seems like if anybody's watching you on TV, we get it. Like, we know it. You know what I mean? And we love to watch it over yeah, and yeah. over again. But come on, we, we know. Like, how can you not know? If you're having a problem with your dog at this point, you should know because Caesar would tell you yeah. that you're the problem and you're not being the appropriate Yeah, but, every, but, but in, the, in the back of the mind of every human being, they don't want to be the problem. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's easy to, to point out outside. If it's always stems from the human, almost not not always, I guess, right? Some of the dogs that you've seen, they no, come no, in some and some of the dogs, some of the dogs are too far gone. Yeah, yeah. They they need a, someone with more experience to bring them back to to easy management. Yeah. Right. So so it can be managed by uh, a human who loves them but doesn't have the experience of uh, rehabilitating. You know, and rehabilitating means returning a dog to his natural state. So it's not that the dog is crazy. Is the dog hasn't re hasn't have his his uh his life met his uh, his fulfillment met so he has become super unstable so he needs to be with someone who knows when the dog is gonna bite when the dog is gonna run away because it's at a level ten that's why I call red zone you know what I mean uh -huh. so most people are okay with level two level three your problem uh, very few people can actually do red zone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, well, how often are you filming a show now? Like, what? Are, what is your like general? Twice a year, I fil uh, film shows because I do also shows in Asia. Uh, for Asia, I um, I am doing Caesar's Recruit Asia, and the whole point of of uh, going to different countries, or in, in specifically in Asia, is because uh, when people think Asia, they think um, humans eating dog. You know, so it's not like, like not everybody in Asia does it. But one way to you you can change someone's way of doing things. It's not about blaming them or telling them they're wrong because you know Hindus never blame Americans by eating cows, uh -huh. right? Cows in in, 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 in India are God. Mm -hmm. So so uh, so in order for us to change the frame of mind of people, we just have to let them know there is other uh, opportunities, other other. Um, other way of looking at it. So, so one thing that I told you know when I went over there is like, would you rather do business with a dog one time, or would you rather do with the same dog for many years? And so they didn't know that dog walking is available. They don't know that grooming is available. They don't know that um, they bring in a dog into your house and, and and so you can take care of the dog is available, which you can make money for years versus making money one time. Okay. So in so do you see it? Yeah. So so then they say, well, yes, I sold the dog so I can make money, or I can do a service and I can make money with the same dog for many years. Right, it makes much more sense. Yeah, it makes much more sense. Sure. So you're not making them wrong. You're just telling them that they can make more money. Uh, you're helping them discover it on their own. That's almost. right. Yeah, yeah. There's a little psychology That's there. right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Sure. You don't go to people's home to tell them they're wrong. You go to people's home to, tell them, to make them aware. Uh -huh. Let them figure it out that they're wrong. So what happens, and do you kind of know who the dog is going to be and who the family is going to be? Do they give you, does, does the producer go in and no, take some footage or anything? I don't care. That, that's more for producers to know because uh, there is a science for TV, you know, what person can keep viewers engaged. Yeah, and what angles they uh, need yeah, to Yeah, you see yeah. what I mean? So I don't care. I don't really care. I love the not knowing. 
So you really go in blind. Yeah, I don't. Okay, I don't need so, to know. But they. So you have a team who probably goes in. They do their thing ahead of time. You don't know. People send videos. Oh, okay. People send videos, and the producer sits. Sit, they sit there to watch. Okay, this person is funny. This person is annoying. This person is this. This person is that. Oh, this person is sweet or whatever. You know that. So it's like flavors of the energies that people need to watch yes. on TV. Yeah. I, I have nothing to do with it. You know, I, I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah, you just you know, come in and you see what It's you just do common sense. Thing. I'm just going to teach you common sense. I'm not, you know, I don't have to be a scientist. I, you know, I, I, love is already there. You know, what's not there is common sense. Sure. Right. Love is always there. <laughs> yeah. In every place you In go, every place. Every I'm not going to go teach people how to right. love a dog. I but mean. how often, I mean, how long do you have to spend, though, once you get into the home? It's, I mean, it well, with the human, you know, with the human, you know, I always ask, so, how can I help you? And then they begin to tell you, la da 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 da, da. and then that. So I divide the the people live in four different worlds: the intellectual world, emotional world, spiritual world, intellect, instinctual world. But if they were living in the instinctual world, they they wouldn't need me. People in the Amazons live in the instinctual world. People in the city, they live in their mind and their emotions or in their spirituality, right? So then, w once they start t talk uh, talking to you. I know uh, they're coming from the intellectual point of view, emotional point of view, or spiritual point of view. For example, people say, my dog is so smart, Caesar, but he doesn't come when I call him. You see it? Oh, my dog is my baby, but he wants to kill a dog. My dog is my soulmate, but he doesn't like my husband. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So by, by how they open Their the conversation, almost. that's right, you see where, what world are they coming from. So you match it to those, one of those four in your head. So, the, so that, that, that allows me, okay, this person's coming from an intellectual point of view, this person's coming from an emotional point of view, or from a spiritual point of view. Nothing wrong with that, but my goal is to help them understand the instinctual point of view. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And then gently, uh, 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 because in their mind, they're doing the right thing. You know what I mean? In their mind, when a person says, my dog is my son, my dog is my baby, is real to them, you know? So you have to be very, very careful uh, on, on just asking them to put it aside, not to let it go. Yeah, it's just to temporarily, put, temporarily put it aside. That's right. So you can see things in a different point of view. Uh -huh. And then you bring this one back, and then we match it or fuse it. So you can do that in what, like an hour? No, not always. Sometimes it's three hours, mm -hmm. you know, because remember, 80% of the people that come to me are women. 80%. One of the things that women love to do is talk. And a lot of times they don't have somebody to talk to in their home. So I become mm -hmm. that guy. That's how I gain the trust. They already love me. Oh, so when you give them the instruction... First already, I listen. Yes, yes, yes. No, for, you first yes, listen to yeah. a woman. You first listen, listen, and listen. You don't tell them when to stop. You just, they, she, she's automatically going to, so okay, now help me. Because what, what, she, what, what, what she's doing, she's venting, mm -hmm. right? So you have to also understand the psychology of a woman and the psychology of a man, you know, and, and, um, and that's it. You just have to let him be, you know what I mean? Let him be. So that way you... Uh, naturally create trust they love me you know they love me already and, and I'm already welcome into right. their home but the, but we haven't had a moment where you build trust and the easiest way to build trust with a woman is you listen to her yeah you know what yeah. I mean and you're not making the wrong you just listen you attentively listen to her genuinely listen to her she's going to feel it that this guy who they already love is listening to her you get it? Yeah. 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 Powerful right there because then they're open. They're open to listening to you when it's time. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I already did my part. I sure. listened to you. Sure. Now it's time for me to share. Well, so it usually doesn't take that long, I guess, then, but a yes, few hours does. or whatever. Oh, it does take a long. So you just let them talk as long as, as, long as they can. You can't stop them because if, stop them. If, 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 they don't, if they don't get to the drain uh -huh. all the way and then you are going to keep you are going to have a halfway there woman you understand i uh, totally yeah. understand but i'm going to illustrate it because yeah. people aren't going to see it so you're kind of saying you have to empty you're pointing to like your the, your abs yeah. sort of and you're saying it has to empty everything yeah. they need to be able to get everything out everything. and if it's only halfway like towards your chest or whatever then it's there they has still have half 
inside the, and it's not yeah. going to work. You, yeah. They haven't let it all out. They haven't let it yeah, all yeah. out. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and most people, most men do not let their women share. They don't want to deal with it. There's too many words. You understand? And, and so... But we women like to share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. We like to share. It is what it is. You know, it, it is what it is. I'm a good listener. What makes me a good dog whisperer is that I'm a good listener. I'm a good listener. And most of my, most of my family members are females. <laughs> I grew up with females. But I, I think that has a lot to do with it. And, and animals, you know. I, you have to listen to an animal. And the animal is going to tell you what he needs, what he's missing, where he is. So it, 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 it's just they're faster to tell you. That's it. You know, a, a woman has that emotional, intellectual sharing moment. You know, so that, that's, that's the difference. They're the both going to share. The dog is going to get to the point quicker because it's instinctual, right? And a woman is emotional, intellectual. And, and, and it's just what it is. It's, it's right, with exceptions, of course. Uh, and what? With exceptions. A woman, there, there's a, there could be a woman who's not like that or a man who's the opposite, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's very, 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 very rare. Very, very rare. Especially in the dog world. Yeah, it's because, yeah. And the dog world is, is very emotional. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, because most of the dogs that I work with, this, their dog is their children. So that, the only way you can see that is emotional. A dog person, a person who's not a dog person, he would say, that's not her son. So do you think of yourself as your dog's father? Or owner? Um, well, this is just a label. It's a title, right? Right. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just a human who loves them. You're their human. Yeah, I'm their human who loves them. And, and my responsibility is to guide them to do the right thing. Uh -huh. You know, and to protect them from the right things. No, not, to protect them from, you know, from things that are not going to be helpful to them. Right. You know, so leadership means protection and direction. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so that, that my job as a, as a human, so you can call me a dad, you can call me a human, you can call me an owner, I don't care. Let me ask you a few specifics about things that you do with the dogs. So, first of all, riding the bike with the dog, mm -hmm. I always see you do it and it looks amazing, but I feel like... Can people really do that, or yeah. can only you do that? No. Because it seems like, I mean, if I tried that, I would break my neck. Well, I mean, you can't do it with a pack of dogs, but you can do it with one dog. Anybody could just do that with a dog? Yeah. It seems so difficult. Listen, once you, once you make a dog focus, that's all you're going to It's like sled. It's, like, it's the same. If yeah. a guy can do it with 12 dogs, 18 dogs, and a sled, <laughs> what, what he's asking is to stay focused on one line. What about... Dogs who hate, or not hate, but are afraid of men. Well, so yes, especially the back of the pack dogs. Dogs that are born to be in the back of the pack. Uh, are definitely going to be more sensitive. Um, uh, they're going to do better with women because women are going to be more gentle in the approach. You know, uh, women are going to be it's okay. So there's going to tone the energy down versus the man is going to say, "What's wrong with the dog?" But here's something funny. I would give you a funny example of my uh, friends, Kim and Jason, who have a, I guess it's a lab mix. I'm not really sure. Their dog Lucy is afraid of all men, not women. However, so my husband comes in one night, meets the dog. He is the gentlest, loves dogs, everything. But she started barking at him just because he was a man. Yeah, the smell, the smell, the smell of the testosterone. Yeah, I mean, we, we're, I mean, and the, and the energy world, we're the same, but when it comes to chemistry, we're different. You know, uh, yeah, our, our, our chemistry is different. You have estrogen, we have testosterone. Right. So there is, yeah. so there is that energy, but there is that smell. The That's smell, the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. Okay, that explains. So it. you know, obviously, you have to help her go through this scent. Yeah, that's a very sensitive dog. That's the kind of dog that you can use for like finding uh, uh, cancer and finding. I mean, that's how strong the sensitivity is. Like, recognizes men at a distance. Right. You know what I mean. So that's the sensitivity. I mean, testosterone, as you know, is a very strong scent. You know, that's why the males are peeing everywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, they want to pee everywhere. I may as well ask you my own question. I have a black lab, and it's a girl. And when she goes to pee outside, she walks as she pees. Yeah. What's that about? Well, some, some dogs don't stop and, and pee. They're just uh, too excited about it, so they keep going. Every they, time. She never stands yeah, still. Yeah, so, yeah some, some, some dogs walking two legs, That's you know, so and, they're, and they pee. Is, 
Yeah, it's just, it's not it's not very common because dogs do take their time to use their bathroom. Uh huh. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's actually that's, that's the your problem. Mom. You're too excited yeah. to like see what's outside. Right. I think that's correct because she likes to sniff everything out. Yeah, the brain is too excited, and the body is not. You know, so the body and the brain are not together. So, what's the biggest mistake humans are making with their dogs? Well, to me, is is about honoring the identity of who you're working with. Uh, horse people are really respectful to a horse. They want the horse to be a horse. Cat people, they want the cat to be a cat. But the dog people, they want the dog to be a human. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, the, the man best friend is the one we don't honor the identity. I'm not saying not to love a dog the way you love a human. I'm, my gratitude to animals and to dogs are, you know, super high. Everything I have accomplished is because... The dog opened the door. But I need to honor. It's like a man not honoring, you know, the, the identity of a woman, you know. It, it, it's just at that same level. Uh -huh. You know, it, it, you were born to be a woman, and, and, you know, and that's your identity. And now the people who are transgender, the identity is something else, and you must honor that, right? And so, so I think by, by beginning with that, that we're not really honoring the identity of a dog and what we want to make as a dog a human first. And that's, that begins the mistake because you're going you're gonna to use human psychology on someone who has his own psychology. So what that Species. says is the human is prioritizing his needs first. Uh -huh. So that alone tells you that, that that's going to be a, a, a not ideal relationship because the human is being selfish unconsciously. People don't know. People don't know they're doing it. And, and super powerful people, super famous people, super rich people do it. You know, because they think, how can love be bad? How can emotions be bad? How can adoring someone like a human be bad? Well, it's nothing wrong once you allow them to be themselves and then you humanize them. So one has to come before the other. Yes, yes. Not a a, a woman person. is going to feel great feeling being a woman. Great. The greatest. The best ever. Right? Yeah. And as you know, until today, 2018, many parts of the world, they still don't allow a woman identity. So, you know, what is the worst thing men do to women not allowing to be women? Because gotcha. she's, yeah, she's going to be happy being who she is. This is nothing, you know, there's no science right, around. It's, it's just, it's very spiritual. Uh, do you love someone when you help somebody to be themselves? That's true love. So what makes you happy? Well, what makes me happy is, is definitely to being able to exercise. I, I think, uh, you know, spirit is important, mind is important, heart is important, but body is important. So you what know? do you do? You exercise every day, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, I wake up at five in the morning. Uh, I take care of the dogs first and foremost. I do uh, a, a, a short walk, uh, about 40 to an hour, you know, and then I go do Pilates. And then I come back home, and then I eat my breakfast with Jahida. She makes an amazing shakes. And then I go to the ranch, and that's where we do the, 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 the more, you know, the pack and the farm animals and all of that stuff. I do, by 12, 1, I do my, um, my meetings, you know. my what meeting. meetings? What meetings? Like business. Oh, business meetings. Yeah, like from 12 to 4, the, the, all the animals are resting, come back to the ranch, do another long walk, another activities, you know, because we have goats, we have, and so everybody, uh, chickens, I make the chickens walk, I make the emu walk, and we, everybody gets to have an interaction. You know, all the, all, the, all my dogs and all my animals interact, like in the farm. To me, that was the best it's thing. It's full circle, That's right? right. Back to so what now you I have always, my own land, yeah, yeah. and I'm bringing what I learned, you know, the, the whole harmony and balance yeah. and the ecosystem that I grew up with. Nobody's on a leash. Everybody is, you know. So what do you do with all the eggs? Because you must get a lot of eggs. Oh, I give I give plenty of eggs to uh, to the people that work with me. Yeah, we we, we take some home. An egg a my, day for my, chicken, right? Uh, sometimes too. Yeah, and, and uh, my kids my kids have you know an apartment, so they always come and take some kids some kids some eggs. Yeah, so just to be able to be productive and help. Plus, you're also in that environment that feels right to you with the farm and the open space and all the animals and family. A wonderful woman. Uh, my mom calls me every, for every day. My dad uh, also, you know, he's, he's there. Uh, and where I, do they live now? They're still in the same place. Okay. Yeah. It never goes one day without me 
uh, being grateful about my accomplishment of staying healthy in a life. You know, so that's my spiritual part of it. I can see that just the way that you talked about everything that you've been through starting when you were a child. I can see that it's constantly in the in the front of your yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's part of who you are, and it's yeah. not something you try to forget or no. move on from, right? No, it's, it's good to know where you come from. You know, it's good to, you know, to appreciate and to know that it's, it was a sacrifice uh, for them before I, I, uh, I became who I became, you know, all of that. It, it's not just see them along across the border and boom. It, it's just whatever happened in the past has to do with what's happening now and what's going to happen in the future. So, so the, 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 the gratitude of the family, you know, and the, the, the pride of the family, um, you know, even if we came from a low-income family, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, what I gain growing up in that environment is who I am right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just I haven't stopped being the same guy, you know, to do better, to help people. Um, to take the opportunities. It's always about helping the pack. You know what I mean? My kids, my, my, my mother in love, my parents. I support my whole family. I am my dad. It's sad to me that's, that's an amazing role model experience. You know what I mean? It's a big responsibility, you know, but, but I love it. I, I, really, uh, uh, I really like that I'm able to provide health and, and food and, and, and shelter. And, and I took my mom to Israel. And as a Catholic, that was one of his dreams. My grandma, my grandma, my, my mother, my grand, yeah, my grandmother from my mom's side was extremely religious, and her dream was to to uh, oh, sorry, to dream was to um, yeah to to uh, to go to to Israel. You know, for for Catholics, that's the big deal. Even for Jewish, it's not a big deal, but for Catholics, it's a big deal. So I, I hold on that uh, unity, that love, that gratitude. That's who we are. Your father got his hundred dollars back. Mm -hmm. Oh, plenty more. <laughs> it was cool, quite a good investment. Yeah, yes, 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 yeah, exactly. You know, the funny part is when I told my dad the first time when I called to Mexico, like months later, um, I told my dad, Dad, guess what? Americans are paying me to walk their dogs. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, so I was very proud. It says three hundred dollars. You know, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars. And my dad said, "Get a better job." <laughs> he had no idea when I'm where we from. Nobody pays you to take care of nobody's dog. So he was like, "What are you? doing? What are you doing? What? I mean, is that, that, that? I mean, you're not a vet. You know what I mean? So the the more legitimate job was to be a vet." And I'm walking people's dog. And that to him was like devastating. You know, how my son yeah, is walking, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, uh, uh, and he said, no, you don't understand, Pop. You don't understand. So finally, finally, when, when he watched the show for the first time, he was, he teared up. Did he? He apologized and so sorry, you know, that, uh, that uh, I have no idea. He didn't know. He had no idea that my dream was to be the best doctor in the world. That's why I told my mom. You know, because if I would have told my dad, my dad would my dad would say, you know, be something else. You know, and he 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 didn't saw a business in the dog training world. He didn't saw it as a legitimate. Well, thing. most people probably wouldn't have. Right, not Especially, until now. Not, not right. Well, most people also don't become Caesar Milan. Right? Yeah, but now now it's a lot of kids that want to be dog whisperers. Now it's a lot of kids that want to rehabilitate dogs. Now you know, now the profession has a. Uh, uh, is legitimate. Mm -hmm. So it's changing. The world is changing because, you know, this this guy wanted to be the best doctor in the world and it turned a dog whisper. You know, so you never know where life is going to take you. You just have to stay super passionate and super focused in what you really want. And, and even if your own family member tells you it's impossible or it's not good or whatever it is, as long as you feel it, go for it. Now I feel like I have to ask, what do you, where do you want to be in five years, or what do you want to do next? Well, um, I think uh, um, right now we are definitely got the respect of the government of Love of the World, and they're understanding the needs of having a dog psychology center in every country. A dog psychology center uh, is a place where people actually understand how to be with a dog. So it's a community of people where they're all in agreement, where breed doesn't matter where you know how to help a person that is struggling. You know what I'm saying? So that, so that becomes the blueprint of a place that is safe so you can then go into the real world. Yeah, so people have dog parks, 
But a dog park is not a place where you learn anything. It's just a place where you gamble. You gamble the life of a dog. Because a lot of times people bring excited dogs, nervous dogs, tense dogs, frustrated dogs, and they put them in, the, in a dog park. You know what I mean? So dog fights will occur. Dog fights will happen. People will fight with each other. People will learn to dislike each other. Because they're not doing it right. They, they're not walking together and then coming to a dog park. You understand? Yeah, sure. They just from different homes yeah. and they just put them there. In this spot okay, guys, me. see if you can uh, mingle with each other. See, that's what I say is a gamble. You're, they're gambling, they're, gam they're gambling the, 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 the moment, uh -huh. you know. So there is a way that you can do it in a more organized, preventative way, but the government uh, needs to be involved because this is something that it should be required, you know. Oh, so you think you want to start these, you want to open these all over the place yeah. and have the government involved? Yeah, it should Fund be. Fund it with funding. But taxpayers, uh -huh. we're, yeah. So like public instead of dog parks, rehabilitation areas or the, 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 the dog psychology centers are going to have the dog park are going to have coffee shops uh -huh. are going to have trails are going to have farm animals are going to have all the scenarios that you might find in the city but you need to be trained human okay it's, it's like yeah. it's like your DMB place you see it you don't just get a car if you don't know how to drive it okay yeah so you need to know how how to pass by dogs how to interact dogs, how to, you know, all of that. You need to understand what state of mind you should bring when you go to a coffee shop or, or when you go to a, to a restaurant. You know what I mean? You should know. Yeah. It's not that you bring a pit bull or a Rottweiler or a Lassa Abso. It's that everybody is in a calm state while there's food present on the table. Therefore, it's not going to be fights. So if there is a way where, where we can prevent all these problems so my goal is, is, is honestly, is for humans to know the world peace can happen with dogs. We might not find world peace with politics, with religion, with economy, and, and with race and all of that stuff, but it's one area we can all find world peace is dog lovers. You know what I mean? Because everybody wants to do the right thing for the dog. So are you working on this? Yeah. Thing? You yeah. are? Yeah. Is this going to happen? Well, if it's not going to happen when I'm alive, it's already starting. It has already started. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and awesome. of course, you know, to see my kids uh, continuing, um, uh, continuing the, the education, uh, I, I did rehabilitation. I did intervention. I want them to do prevention. You know, I, I want them to focus on making sure the millennials, uh, the next generation, to, to understand that it, there, is, there is a way where you can prevent uh, for a dog to ever become unstable. How did you get so good at speaking English? Like, you really speak well. Well, thank you. Um, in the back of my mind, I don't think it is, it's so uh, uh, clear. But uh, this comes from my mom. You know, my, my mom say, uh, if you're going to listen to somebody, you can listen to people who are going to be positive about what they're saying. So slang was not allowed for me to, to speak. And so Oprah, Tony Robbins, Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, oh, so I started seeking for those people, the influence people, how they talk, how clear they talk, you know, how they pause, the words they use. Uh, so I study people, I, I, I study people just like a baby studies, you know, grown-ups. And so, um, you know, I, I definitely imitate without losing me. You know, and of course, I want to make sure that the, the people understand what I'm saying. So I put a lot of effort in, in, uh, in being clear. I put a lot of effort in using universal words. You know, the, the, the whole world from a teenager to a young person. Because you're going to see, if you watch the show tonight, you're going to see kids, teenagers, uh, you know, uh, moms and seniors. So the whole entire family comes. Right, right. So I have to be able to be mature, but at the same time, um, simple, where kids can learn. Yes, and you're understand. accessible to everyone. Yes, because to me, the goal is we can all have an amazing relationship with dogs. And I just heard that you have some fans, like people drive really far, they'll fly 15 to Fifteen hours, see ten you. hours, fly. Yeah, uh, in in LA, we have uh, I do a TCW the training season's way. People from Germany, people from uh, Egypt, people from Brazil, people from all over the world comes, you know, they, 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 every, every, from all over the world. So do they get to meet you? Do they get a chance to be like, or I do not? the classes. 
I yeah. thought they were coming to the live shows. Oh, well, the live shows is here. Like uh, the the long ones will be like uh, Canada or Texas. Right. And and so there is people they and they they, they are you know I am their their Christmas present <laughs> or their birthday present. That's so cool. Yes, yeah. So it's it's a family thing, you know, it, for, for because. Sorry, because dogs are part of the family, and they feel that I am part of their family, you know, and I help them with their family member, and so the gratitude is huge, the love is huge, the appreciation is huge, you know, and so, so for them to want to meet me and say thank you or hug or I always want to meet you, it's, it's, it's very common, it's very normal. I don't take it for granted. I don't, I, I I know that the struggle that a lot of people have to do. Uh, uh, you know, driving 10 hours, 15 hours, is, is, is a lot, just for two hours. But yeah, so it's, it's great, I mean. Yeah, Dario is showing me, she has pictures of these of a group of women who have come to see you over and over again. That's right. That's and like, so she has them over then time. Then you have the super fans. Super fans. Then you have the super, super fans. I mean, they, and they love it every time. You know, they love her every time. I feel like Bruce Sprinting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's the same people who go to this concert. <laughs> the same, they're all doing the, the hair mop, you know. That. And so, so I guess I am uh, Bruce Sprinting level, you know. Um, and, but I'm the dog guy. So you see a lot of grandparents coming, you know. You're doing a great job. And I love, that's when I love Because that's a generation they have seen a lot. But they never seen a Mexican like guy. This. You know what I mean? They never seen a Mexican guy influence America at this level with dogs. You know, they have seen Cesar Chavez, you know, which is you know uh, the rights of for farmers. But they never seen a guy who who went outside what the common Mexican thing, you know, and and it went into the heart of America, which is dogs. So do you go back to Mexico often? Yeah. Yeah, my do, and do people recognize you there as oh like God. the American yeah. star? Over there, I'm a hero. Oh, you're more than the American star. You're global. Oh yeah, I'm over there uh, uh, because I'm an immigrant. You know what I mean? Uh, because I come. Remember, third world country. The reason was third country because vast majority is poor, poor. So when you, when they see somebody that they can relate, and they went this far, uh -huh. you know, uh, you don't see a lot of Latinos uh, in, in American television. You see them in Univision. <laughs> yeah, know? you don't. No. There really aren't many. Yeah, George Lopez, you know, uh, this your nest. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. <laughs> so, but, but those were actors. I'm actually a guy who actually teaches. You know, I'm the first Latino who actually teaches on TV. And That's so for them, so they feel proud of they you. They feel very proud. And they grateful. Feel, and, you know, I jumped the border. I speak English. Yeah, you know, you're like the perfect. And I went yeah. not only America, worldwide. It's, I'm in 120 countries. What happens when you're like walking or you're just kind of walking out? Do you get recognized? Yeah. Do they come up to you a little bit too often? Yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how do you handle that? To just take a picture. Just take a picture and go. Yeah. yeah. Some people want to ask you a question, you know, but I say, ah, that's not the right time. You're very recognizable. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, they, they have that chance, you know, it's, it's listen, it's, it doesn't take two seconds for me to answer a question, you know. And even at the airport, it'll happen, right? All the time. <laughs> You'll be going through customs? All the time. I mean, it has, you know, obviously, uh, like, the, the, the most funny part is when the pilot, as we are in the air, comes out of the cabin and say, hey, I have a problem with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you just, just like, can you go back and when we land, I can answer the question? <laughs> just oh, fly don't worry, that's right. You know, like that's the pilot. <laughs> oh, don't worry, the, you know, my, my partner is right there. It's like, no, but two people is better. <laughs> right, there's a reason there are two people they put in that spot. That's right. You, you mean, when I went to the White House um, uh, many years ago, the Secret Service knew that I was in line because you got to go online, you know, and everybody goes, everybody, you know, everybody goes online. But they knew that the, the dog whisper was there. I cut the line and all the way to the front. Like, I even at the White House. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. That's, that's, well, that's, that's back leader status. That is. <laughs> <laughs> You're living a good life. I have seen the world. Who do people think Caesar Milan is? Who do they think you are? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many things. <laughs> There's so so many things. Um, I don't know.
don't know. I, I know who, who my mom thinks I am. Who does your mom think you are? She thinks I'm an angel. <laughs> Is she right? I'm a good son. Yeah, I'm a good son. I'm definitely a good son, a good uh, brother. Yeah. I try to be for her, you know, for her, for my dad. Yeah. I wanted to have the best life. And it sounds like they raised you well. A lot of love. Yeah. A lot of love. A lot of good moral values. Um, a lot of rules. Um, you know, I, it's definitely my mom and my dad were my pack leaders. You know, I, 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 I never saw my, my dad as having more authority than my mom. Uh, my grandparents were my pack leaders. So I, I was born and raised in a super healthy environment with respect, trust, and love uh, was everything. Uh, therefore, loyalty rises, you know, after those three things. And, and I think that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing, uh, you know, because I love that about animals. You know, I love I love how they trust 100%, respect 100%, love you 100%. Therefore, they're loyal to you. That's what they follow you off leash. You see it. So once you have that, those those three things, loyalty is the leash. Mm -hmm. And I experienced that with my human pack. You know, and so by me being with my dogs, it's like always remembering how my family was, me growing up. Who is Caesar Milan, really? I would see myself as a as a guy with, uh, like most people, with big dreams. You know, visionary. Um, I want to help the world. Sincerely, want to help the world. Um, I think it's possible. You know, I think it's needed. Um, my faith is is bigger than my instincts. I just want to be different than anybody else, so it's easier for me to influence people because I. I want to definitely be unique about the approach that I do. Yeah, I think you've done that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about that. Okay, here's what I would like to do. I'm going to ask you some quick answer questions. Okay. So they're not very deep or reflective. They're just answer what, off the top of All your right. head. What is in your fridge? Coconut water. What's in your car or do you drive a truck? I drive a Range Rover. What's in it? Dogs. <laughs> What's the first thing you do when you get home? Kiss Jahaira. Your fiance? Yeah. What TV shows do you watch now? Uh, Game of Thrones, uh, Narcos, uh, uh, comedy, standard comedy. I watch a lot of that. Yeah, we watch a lot of documentary about food and things like that. Do you have any celebrity clients? Many. Who's your favorite? All of them. What's a perfect Sunday for you? I uh, wake up really early. Um, and then uh, for Jahaira to uh, agree to go with me to the ranch and we stop at my favorite menudo place that's the only day that I do a cheating and I eat my awesome Mexican food which nobody likes but I love it wait nobody likes that? well most people don't like it because it's the stomach of the cow <laughs> so you're eating it alone basically yeah okay what's your favorite meal? oh my favorite meal has to be huevo rancheros Love them. One of your favorite restaurants? One of my favorite restaurants has to be Crustaceans. One product I can't live without is? My face cream. Which is? I forgot the name of it, but I can't live without it. Oh, no clippers. No clippers. Forget about the face cream, no clippers. I don't like to see a little bit of nail. I like my nails super clean. I work with animals and I think it's very important for a man to be super, super clean on his nails and his fingers. The last thing I do before I go to sleep is? Uh, make sure the dogs are all fine. You know, everybody uh, take a pee break before they go to sleep and then hug Jahaira super tightly. If I wasn't a dog whisperer, I'd be? A park ranger. I just want to work around nature, you know, or uh, uh, I love I love dolphins. Uh, but I'm not really good in the water. But I would just anything. You know, I would, listen, you, believe it or not, I would love to clean freeways. I don't like to see freeways dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever go out there yourself and pick a few it's things dangerous. up that you see? It's right, dangerous. It's right. dangerous. They don't let you. The Highway Patrol would not let you clean the freeways. But, you know, you can ask Jahaira. I say, babe, I just hate, don't like when I see all this dirt. Because I love the freeways in America, you know. The roads are so beautiful, so manicured. So there's no need for people to have 
uh, trash. That's why I love Singapore. Singapore is the most beautiful, clean country. Because it's a country. Uh, you're not going to see trash. I, I love that discipline. I love that organization, that cleanliness. What are you obsessed with? Life. I'm obsessed with uh, sharing the simplicity of life. My biggest secret is? My biggest secret? I don't have a secret. I'm very open. I mean, I share everything. I obviously share, you know, me trying to commit suicide and my divorces and my losses. And I, I, I know I, I don't like to hide things because it just drives me crazy. And I, I live by the energy, so I don't like to hold anything because it becomes toxic. That's it. Cesar Milan, thank you for being on Really Famous. Thank you.